long did you have the store in Chardon? For three years. Um, really, the working in Chardon was kind of fun, except the drive was just terrible. Uh, the snowstorm one year was enough that it was like three and a half hour drive home, and it's time to move the bookstore. And that's why I moved it. Uh, saw Ron Mackey, and he said his sister's store was open, and that started the move, and so we moved 55,000 books to here. Pretty easy after that point. And you have a bigger store here? By about 20% than it was in Chardon. Uh, the problem with Chardon was it did have steps to get into the store. This is walk right in off the street, so that way it was a lot nicer. Uh, there's a little less traffic here. That's a downside, So, but it's a three-minute walk from home and don't have to drive to Chardon. That was a winner. Time to come home. Yeah. Well, tell me, where, you, where did you get all of the books? I've been collecting since I was 10. Um, I really didn't buy much from yard sales. It came mostly from uh, people that were retired professors, uh, uh, people that were educators, uh, geologists, uh, builders, uh, architects, uh, artists, uh, just as I acquired their collections through the years, uh, rather than to go out to garage sales and buy some of this stuff. Some of it's just so bizarre that the average guy would have never bought it. So what's, what bizarre stuff do you have? Oh, there's Grant's memoirs, uh, first editions, uh, a lot of architecture books from the early 1900s, uh, a lot of military books from the Civil War. Uh, uh, there's a ton of, uh, uh, I guess you would call it uh, um, biographies and autobiographies of, of various people that just interested me uh, that I acquired through the years. So rather eclectic group of, and then there's also 20,000 comic books. So there's a lot's been acquired just through the years that rather than to go out and I want to specifically buy this, it was just, oh, that looks fun. I'll read that. So pretty much that's, it was a little bit of everything and anything. So how many of these books have you read? at least 60%, if not 70. Uh, the romance novels I'm thin on, the uh, uh, vampire romance I haven't touched, the animes, I have a whole bunch of them, but haven't read them. Um, the crossing over books, uh, psych the uh, parapsychology books, uh, paranormal books, I'm a little thin on some of those. Uh, Haas, I do find him quite fascinating, so I like to read him. Um, but anything that has to do with archaeology, geology, history, political science, yeah, I've nailed them. So, so we have, would you say you have some hard to find books here that people may not be able to Very find? hard, yeah. There's a lot of real stuff here that you just can't get your hands on anymore. Um, especially a lot of the stuff that has to do with like Teddy Roosevelt's works and stuff like that. Very obscure people that wrote some stuff that never really made it to the, the forefront of the literature scene. Uh, a lot of Washington Irving, mm. uh, a lot of uh, Wadsworth, uh, a whole bunch of uh, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the author now, my mind went blank. Um, Balzac. Uh, I have the complete works of Balzac. Uh, just a lot of people never got into that, never read that stuff. So why I took an interest in it, I have no idea. <laughs> just just did. What about children's books? There's a huge section in the back that has to do with children's books. There's a bunch of golden books. There are a bunch of uh, Nancy Drew, Hardy Boy books. Uh, just about anything, all kinds of books that had to do with horses. Uh, the Farley books, the uh, uh, My Friend Flick, of, a lot of animal books. Uh, 
there's a huge selection of uh, uh, the Goosebump books. Uh, Boxcar Kids, I, I do get a lot of those in, but they come and go so fast that the 39 Clue books are very hard to come on, uh, keep. Right? Mm -hmm. they're, they're easy to get rid of, but right now I don't have one in the store. Uh, they come in, they last about 20 minutes. Um, it's kind of like a, uh, some of the cookbooks that are sought after so much. The Betty Crocker first edition. Uh, Julia Proust wrote a cookbook. I can't keep that one in here. Um, the, uh, the other one that's kind of interesting is George Foreman's How to Use His George Foreman Grill. <laughs> I would think that that would be like a hot seller, but that usually, if I get one in, doesn't last very long. Like, wow, I have one of those. I don't ever use it. They don't know how. So <laughs> anyway, that's kind of fun. Never really is a, any one year that there's been a book that is consistently held its head as far as this book has been sought after, sought after, sought after. So it's kind of interesting. What about contemporary stuff? Any of the local authors I have, uh, any of the major authors I have, the Pattersons, the C.J. Box, uh, especially the Hunter, um, all the military stuff the guys like to read, Griffins, uh, Clancy, uh, all that stuff I have in, in quite depth. Um, there's a huge section of historical religious fiction. Um, the Beverly Lewis's, um, uh, Al Lacey, um, uh, Debbie McCumbers, um, uh, but there's a large historical religious section. Um, and then there's not a real deep section, but I have a pretty good section of large print books. Uh, those are kind of hard to find. Um, they either get so well used, the spines break because their books are bigger, they're just hard to find in good shape. Sometimes the pages are missing or the, the spines are broke or they're just hard to find the large print books in good shape. Uh, one thing has been a disappointment. I really thought I'd be able to have a lot of audio books. But when the people bring them in, they're either missing some of the CDs or cassettes or they're distorted in some fashion, won't play. That's been a disappointment. I really thought I could have a large audio section. It's just not to be. Just can't come across them that are in good shape. So that's been a disappointment. Well, tell me what else is here because it's not just books. We have a large selection of Lionel trains, HO trains. Um, there's a large selection of Z gauge. Uh, there is some G gauge here, which is the outdoor trains. I don't have any LGB. If I was going to do an outdoor garden, that's the only way I'd go. Um, the Lionel G scale is a lot of fun at Christmas, but it never really caught on. They don't have the quality that the LGB does. So, uh, then there's local jewelry, uh, people that have built and designed jewelry that are in the display cases. Uh, right now, there's three vendors that come in and show off their jewelry stuff. Uh, there's also, uh, what we're working on right now is the antique section of the store that will set up in what used to be the mezzanine of the old card shop. Um, we're working on it, hopefully by... So you'll be upstairs. We'll be upstairs as well as downstairs. Um, this place runs deep. You come in here, you don't realize it, but you go back and then there's another whole section back there. Right. And there's actually room behind what you see yet. Uh, we haven't quite decided whether to put the antiques upstairs or downstairs in that section simply because of the stairs. Um, the young people don't seem to collect antiques, so it might behoove us <clears throat> to actually put the antiques on the first floor, move the comic books to the upstairs, so... It's kind of a work in progress to see what works, what doesn't work. So that remains to be seen. But that's the next push is to get the what I have of antiques into the store set up. And do you buy books? Oh, yes. People come in and... Buy books. If you got to understand, it used to be that the bookstores would allow you to trade. But the governor, he doesn't particularly like to get beat out of sales tax. So what we have to do is charge for the total purchase. 
and then we can deduct if you bring books in against the purchase. That way the governor gets his sales tax. We have to make the governor happy. But I do buy, um, I, I do buy estates out from time to time if a uh, few professors I have bought their whole entire collections. Um, but as a rule, uh, yeah, we buy and sell. Uh, I, I really, it's hard to try to, to keep the inventory very pristine. So a lot of times people will come in with books that are well read, well used, and you just don't really want them because they're so beat up that mm -hmm. I don't want them for on the shelves. So we just go through them. I do do appraisals. If you think you have a book that's valuable, bring it in. I'll tell you what it's worth. Uh, we don't charge for that. Um, I do that for a lot of people that want to sell me books. They'll bring in a book and don't realize they have something very unique. Um, a lady brought in a bunch of books and she had a Charlie's Chocolate Factory book, first edition. What makes it so unique is some of the, the print on the title page is not on all of the chocolate, or Charlie Chocolate Factory books. And she had one of the ones that was an oops, I call it, um, and it was worth about 175 bucks. Mm. So she ended up keeping it. But if you have something that's valuable, I at least try to tell the people, hey, you may not want to sell this, give it to your grandkids. So we do do a lot of that. Now, if I were a customer, I came in, <coughs> I said, you have this book or that book, would you know? Yes, I can <laughs> tell you what I have. I can tell you if uh, it, it's in paperback or... I might have three or four copies of it. One might be a signed first edition, and one might be just a regular uh, paperback that is from the Scholastic version of it, like Robinson Crusoe or uh, Robin Hood even. Uh, so, yeah, pretty much I know if I have three or four copies of something. Just a lot of the Jules Verne stuff, I might have 20 copies, but it just depends on whether you want to pay a dollar for it in a paperback or... First edition, so. Mm -hmm. You say your trade isn't as good as it was in Shard, and um, how has it been overall, though? <coughs> the, uh, the foot traffic, um, if you want to call it feet on the street, mm -hmm. there was more traffic because of all the courthouse buildings in mm -hmm. Chardon. You know, the county courts were there. Right. Uh, so there was a lot of feet on the street traffic that somebody would have 20 minutes to kill and they would wander in. Uh, we don't have that kind of foot traffic in Conneaut. The thing that really keeps me here is the people have remembered me and they come from all over. They used to come frequently to Chardon. Now they'll come once every six weeks here, but they still come. They've followed me from Russell, mm. Manoa, uh, John Carroll, uh, uh, especially uh, the uh, down south, Manoa, Ravenna. I'm always amazed when those people come in. Yeah, from Portage County, that's quite a drive. Yeah. Now, are they coming here for the beach? Are they coming here for White Turkey Drive-In? No, I have no idea. <laughs> but it is definitely a destination, and they are coming here anyway. Um, a tank full trip, who knows, but they do come. The thing that has really hurt book sales is the e-readers, the... Uh, um, the nooks, all those kind of things, uh, but they certainly have their place. Uh, you're not going to stop progress. Uh, when I was in Chardon, there was a, a delightful little old lady who was about 92, and she had macular degeneration so bad she could no longer read. Her relatives bought her a uh, Kindle and Nook, one of those that allowed her to change the color of the background. She was able to read again, and she loved to read uh, uh, The Cardinal, uh, by uh, Jean Stratton Porter, and she was thrilled that she could read that book one more time before she died. Uh, it, it definitely has a place. It's like anything else. Um, we went from rotary dial to cell phones. Mm -hmm. um, it's just progress. You're not going to stop it. Uh, the only thing I have going for me is I have a lot of collectibles. Uh, people still like to collect things. Not as much as they used to, it seems, but so everything has its place, I suppose.